Chapter 11, the gonococcus. That the gonococcus is the cause of gonorrhea is no longer a subject for discussion. Ricord's recette pour attraper la chaude pisse is answered by the aphorism of Marcel Sier. La plus belle femme du monde ne peut donner que ce que a. <laughs> no person can impart or acquire gonorrhea except by imparting or acquiring the gonococcus. The gonococcus is a non-mobile diplococcus occurring within, as well as outside of, pus and epithelial cells. It stains readily with the familiar aniline dyes. It does not take the gram. It will not grow on the usual culture media. It produces endogenous toxins. It cannot be inoculated upon animals. Microscopic characteristics. When a drop of gonorrheal pus is properly stained and examined through an immersion lens of 1 12th aperture, the gonococci seen present the following characteristics. One, they are diplococci. Each individual of a pair is D-shaped, coffee bean shaped, with the flat or slightly concave border opposed to its fellow, so that the couple form an ovoid made up of two separate hemispheres. The length of the pair averages about 1.6 micrometers, and the interspace is about half as wide as either segment. Two, the diplococci are found grouped in pairs, fours, and other multiples of two, showing a tendency to rectangular disposition, in marked contrast to the irregular massing of staphylococci and the linear arrangement of streptococci. The gonococcus, when it occurs in pus, is found both within and outside of the pus and the epithelial cells. Footnote. There is no close cl clinical relation between the intracellular or the extracellular position of the gonococci and the grade or the stage of the inflammation. Every specimen contains gonococci both inside and outside the cells and in no definite proportion. The most characteristic groups are met with inside the cells. The extracellular gonococci may be scattered or irregularly grouped but the intracellular specimens present a greater regularity of arrangement. Without being mathematically distributed, there is still a certain symmetry in the grouping, an absence of jumbling, which the observer soon learns to appreciate at a glance and which our plates attempt to reproduce. Plate nine, figures one and two. Plate nine. Microphotographs of gonococci and tubercle bacilli. Figure one, gonorrheal pus, first stain, gentian violet solution. Figure two, gonorrheal pus, Bismarck brown. Cells and gonococci take the brown stain while the pseudo gonococci remain black. Figure three, tubercle bacilli in urine. Figure four, smegma bacilli in urine. Such are the characteristics of the gonococcus. It is a double D diplococcus occurring intracellularly and in typical groups, but these characteristics are sometimes shared by other bacteria met with in urethral pus. We must look further for a distinguishing feature. This we find in the reaction of the gonococcus to the gram stain. Gram reaction. Gonococci do not take the gram. They are gram negative. This means that if these cocci are stained first with an aniline dye and then with Lugol reagent, see below, the resultant stain may be washed from them, from the cells, from many other bacteria, but not from most staphylococci. The exceptions are discussed on page 194. And other cocci, which under the microscope may otherwise resemble <clears throat> true gonococci. Hence, when the gram stain is applied, a thorough washing with alcohol leaves the cells and gonococci colorless, while the pseudo gonococci stand out in bold relief, stained darkly by the combined color of the aniline dye and the gram stain. <clears throat> in order to make the effect of the gram stain more apparent, it is customary to restain the cells and gonococci with a contrasting color in order that the true gonococci may be visible for direct comparison with the faults. Figure two, I'm sorry, plate two, figure two.